Red Lama 23D generalist, uh, founder of my company, Yuki Design. I do concept production, teaching, model sales. Production consists uh, from all stages, uh, from, from concept till animation, so rigging, texturing, modeling, sculpting, whatever needs. Uh, have so far 10 years of experience. Uh, it was quite qual colorful. Um, next up, I should probably mention some acolytes. For these, I had to bit, do a bit of digging because they all happened over time and I forgot a lot of them. So I had to like go and grab all of them and half the links are dead. So maybe I just mention quickly these some of these. But, uh, some most proud ones were the little animated guy, work at 12, that is featured on Sketchfab's homepage. Uh, this was the, uh, I was the happiest day of my life, it happened. <laughs> um, and the most recent one I got uh, featured at 80 level, which I respect a lot, with the cover runner model and concept. And I had some occasional other like wins and uh, uh, contributes to certain challenges over time. Um, I was really happy about all of them, and they each played a part in my becoming, uh, piece by piece. Um, sometimes I meant for something to win, and some things I just built for fun, and by accident, the one for fun one, which is weird, and it happens a lot. Uh, after some time, these things became uh, got me uh, attention so i started publicly speaking mainly um, aimed toward uh, design for games uh, in all aspects of it in my experience and all the things i learned working with other people so i was speaker at connector conference 2015 then i did it at the game dev career career day at zagreb in 2018 which was an accident because one of the very known studios couldn't come, uh, so I was an emergency fill, and it went went fine anyway. And then I was speaker and in that forum uh, in my hometown, and the last I was speaker on at GDDC Osiek, uh, hosted by Leo Tot. Uh, they were all really fun experiences. Uh, something to remember, right? And, uh, I often got 10 most popular model sections at Sketchfab, uh, too many to count. Basically, if I use enough effort, more than like two days, this happens. I'm also aware that uh, I do that uh, because no one better is posting at that particular time. Uh, and I had a bunch of interviews which were very consequence of every other thing. So it's kind of a spider web of appearance. Um, uh, and I got, in these 10 years, I only published one game so far, which was Fleets of Heroes, where I did all uh, 3D design and uh, some of 2D illustrations and character illustrations. And now I'm working on Text of the Galaxy, which is coming soon, currently in uh, closed uh, Hi. alpha state. Sorry, Igor. Sorry to interrupt. Are you trying to share your screen yeah. right now? Or... <clears throat> Oh, sick. <laughs> so there's a... Oh, sorry. so all this happened without no one seeing it. All right, all right, all right. We can go back uh, just so that... Yeah, we can go back from the beginning. I, I'm sure viewers would no, love to... It's very, very much insignificant. <laughs> just me. Yeah, I'll switch to my screen mm. while you get that set up. Because I'm wondering, like, well, this guy, there's no way he's memorizing all this. Uh, probably he's not aware. Yeah, I, I couldn't memorize it. Uh, I, I had to, uh, I had to put it on, on slides. Okay, no, that's perfectly it's, fine. It's just, yeah, if you yeah, don't it's mind, too many to remember. Of course, uh, if Do you don't mind. Now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely see it. If you don't mind oh, okay, okay. kind of going through it from the beginning, because we will have recording of this for anyone huh? that's missed it. And so right, I right. think I think viewers I, I won't out there. Bother anyone too long. <laughs> <laughs> In so general, everybody... I don't really like talking to my, about myself too much, but it was requested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But uh, I'm going to switch back to your slide anyway. and we are good to go. All right. All right. <clears throat> 
so this is the, the on screen stuff of what I was mentioning. Uh, the, the right one is the logo I invented, so it still remains. I kind of like it. So these are some of the spotlights that uh, some of you may have seen uh, somewhere, mainly on Sketchfab, CG Trader. And if you go to Sketchfab, if you're not logged in, you can see the lower left one on the home page. Also, the Luminaris was downloaded over 4,000 4, times because it's free. I made it as a kind of a giving back to community sort of thing, but it, it brought me uh, business and brought me sort of fame. It also won um, CG Trader Sci Fi Low Poly uh, Challenge. So, a lot of stuff that I do personally kind of has this effect that it, it brings other stuff. Um, uh, these are the challenges that I sort of won. Maybe interesting story about the can. Um, I meant the other one to win, which I made specifically to be commercial. Uh, and this one I did for fun because I wanted to feel something uh, more loose and playful and I didn't plan it, but that one won. Yeah. Uh, public speaking stuff. Uh, you now this and interviews and that's. Uh, did I go too fast? Do you hear me? Just a minute. Do we have audio? Can you hear me or? Yes, yes, I do hear you. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> okay. Um, so that was kind of a summary of things I've been doing on and off. But this is all kind of in this introductory data. What I was meant to speak about how how this all came to be from Eastern Europe, post-war era. Um, maybe I should play a video to many, maybe better showcase some things I did. Um, thing is, hopefully, it, it might help someone that kind of feels also lost and doesn't know where to go. Uh, I also went like the guerrilla way about it. So Igor, so um, you playing through the video, do you mind kind of talking through some of these experiences since uh, we, don't, we don't get to hear audio uh, if you're playing off your computer? Uh, so uh, I'll start talking about the very beginning 
at the very beginning, but basically what took me into into this because the majority of my life uh, this was completely out of scope it was just um, uh, there was no way to to even know how to do any of it thing is i was very creative uh, always but there was no way for me to basically show it to anyone or do anything with it so, why? Uh, because uh, uh, the situation wasn't really full of game awareness like it is now. Uh, it was all really frowned upon. Um, uh, meaning it wasn't really respected, only really rare, rare, rarely people played games anyway, it was only boys. Uh, economy was uh, horrible, jobs were scarce, uh, education was non-existent uh, regarding that. There were only, only some uh, channels that were really official and there was no much goal to them, maybe like classical art schools. Uh, I mean, nothing near to what uh, I wanted. So I had no like um, a milestone to look up to. Uh, uh, things were really is isolated. Uh, and there was no internet, so I couldn't even ask a question. Um, so I was on the one hand, like judged or destined to do jobs I don't like, which were, which were all of them were generic. Um, and I very uh, fast I reached uh, like the top of uh, almost every job I was, and the kind of ceiling I reached was just suffocating. So, so I like projected uh, for myself, is, am I going to do this for this in my life? And I didn't feel well. So I decided I'll find a way no matter what. Um, so what do I do? What I had, uh, the only window we had back then was uh, television. And that, even now, is not really the best way to look at in the world. Um, uh, with lack of internet, I also had magazines. So I bought a lot of magazines, uh, mainly about PC gaming and PC tech. So this was, I kind of felt there was something to it, even though very small number of people even know the PC back then. Um, uh, so once I got into it, I got more and more leads on to work, what to do. And I found about ZBrush. I mean, I didn't know what the vertex is or any of this. But as soon as I saw a wireframe, uh, like knew, I knew something about it. Uh, is it matters. So I don't know what, what it was exactly. It just pulled me and I found about ZBrush. Um, so uh, again, I had no idea how to get it because I couldn't buy it. There was no, like, I had no idea or what to, what to do, where to ask or how much it costs, um, it was really closed off. So we were very, um, like, piracy-oriented nation back then. Mm, uh, only few people, like, had access to, to, to a burnt CD. So maybe it's, uh, it's interesting that I actually pirated my first ZBrush, and the guy who sold me to it, it was weird, like everybody else was like buying porn and video games. And I'm like asking for a software and <laughs> maybe some tutorials. He, he thought I was insane, but I was really keen on learning this stuff because I was curious. Um, so I started doing some stuff and I was mind blown. This was the first time that I can actually show to myself in a three dimensions, uh, meaning 
what I can do, what I cannot do. And I could, uh, this is the first time I could start experimenting uh, with what can be done. It was just, um, it was mind blown all the way. But still, I had no internet and there was no way to actually show it to anyone or to do anything with it. It was uh, practically useless and it was just lying on my disk for a while to come. Uh, but then, um, now I felt the blood, right? so now I knew I can do it. And some months have passed, and I sort of got the internet when I was at Holland, um, was working as a pipe, pipe smith on, on ships, but we had a local Wi-Fi, and this is where I basically first time met with uh, the community like online type where I could have actually shared my work and still no, did no idea, had no idea what I was doing, but this was the first time when I found out that there are actually art sites out there. So in my immediate surroundings, I thought I was good. <laughs> but when I got online, oh boy, was I wrong. So I, um, uh, in the same time, I was really afraid to share my ideas online, and at the same time, I wanted to because I always thought uh, that someone's going to steal it. Um, also, we we're really drilled in Balkan here. Um, they, we're really neg negative, meaning whatever you do, someone's going to steal it from you and uh, like ditch you. So it was the culture where you don't. Uh, it's not desirable for you to try too hard at anything because anything will fail anyway. Uh, it was also a bit scary to to go online among uh, those real artists that I knew back then. But I decided to just uh, shed all that and deny all these fears because I felt it was right. Um, and I kind of felt uh, that everyone should do it because I'm not, I wasn't the only one there. So... If they can do it, they are 10 times better. And what am I to, to be afraid with an average work compared to them? So at that time, my friend died. Uh, so I'm thinking, uh, what what would happen if I die? You know, who who do these artworks stay for if I, they have watermark? I used to have watermark. <laughs> So I, I just decided to remove all that and completely open myself no matter what. And this was kind of a start of my uh, mentality opening up, actually. Uh, it was deviant art, of course. Uh, then the, I still didn't have Facebook. And I really didn't know about any other site. And all my art stuff uh, revolved from DeviantArt. So at what point, um, DeviantArt has this function with journals. Um, when you can post a journal uh, saying whatever you need, feel, do, ask a question. And one artist named Rodrigo Vega, which I followed, uh, posted a journal where they need a 3D artist what should, who should be proficient at low, low poly texturing, um, maybe even animation. And he had a list. Uh, thing is, out of all that list, I had uh, uh, none. I had absolutely zero skills. But I had some uh, designs of spaceships which I did uh, for my own sake, which were biomechanical kind of type. And uh, next thing that happened after I posted, I posted it. Uh, I literally said, I don't have any of these skills, but I got these designs. Feel free to use them in your game if you want. And uh, uh, I think it was the other day I had a note from Nick, their lead, asking me if I would like to uh, be a part of the team and design that race. <laughs> I was completely overjoyed. This was incredible for me then. Um, so it was proof that I wasn't crazy. You know? And finally, it was like that uh, 
like a foot in the door kind of thing that all 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 my hopes were actually real you know and that was pretty much awesome uh, now the thing was uh, I had no skills right and that race was uh, last in the row but the project was only started for Zenovus Eternal so what are we gonna do since I'm now on the team and there's nothing to do they gave me an asset uh, in order to so I can find out if I can reproduce that um, until then I never reproduced anything by looking at it and I succeeded it actually went really cool so they connected me with their 3D artist Muhammad Rotep he is from Cairo um, and he actually uh, taught me how to use uh, 3D Max and Photoshop gave me the right tutorials but he also explained what's uh, what's the intention behind modeling not just modeling as a process but stuff like it's good to have quads uh, like necessity of a grid um, like where to put less where to put you know he, he really taught me the intuitive side and how to think regarding God modeling and the process itself was easy I, I learned max I photoshop about a month maybe, maybe less uh, the the way of thinking took a bit longer and getting the habit took longer, maybe six months. So uh, it was a really uh, snowballing into production. I started regularly working with them. And this is where I first uh, felt uh, actual professionalism. When we met, uh, I think it was a year and a half after we started working together. I mean, we know each other online. But uh, the first time we met at the airport when we were going to Pax East, I think it was Pax East first, but I forgot. We went for both. And it, those were the best gaming related experience I ever had, like a dream come true. Uh, the team was awesome. The people I worked with were great. They're really advanced by now. Maybe you heard of Adam Byrne. He worked like he worked on Wonder Woman as a concept artist, I think. Um, anyway, it was amazing. Uh, that lasted four and a half years, I think. I worked with them, which was great. Sadly, it came to a kind of fall, and they couldn't pass anymore. So this was the time that I. Uh, started freelancing and it was like learning how to fly all over again. Um, finding clients was something I had no idea how to do. I may have sent maybe 10 uh, portfolios ever in my life and three of them were declined and others weren't even answered. So I, I quickly gave up on the portfolio sending thing <laughs> because it simply didn't work. Um, it was really hard to find studios and my level also wasn't good enough, I believe, not sure. <laughs> but also there is this uh, thing where you aim blindly at a studio because, because you have no idea what they're doing. Maybe it's still in development, they haven't released any material and it's just blind shooting. What I find better is just to be uh, publicly good and let them find you. This worked a lot better for me. And that's what I did. I just made the coolest stuff possible and posted online wherever I could, uh, researched every damn resource I had. So, uh, of course, there were horror stories. One, uh, there was this client which was very promising. And uh, after I worked, for a week. I mean, he was delighted. He said, we're going to be the next blizzard. Um, all the praise you can imagine. <laughs> but when it came time for the first payment, luckily it's been only a week. Uh, basically, he didn't have any money. And then he started shouting at me that I don't understand the work. I don't understand supply and demand. 
with, and he was really rich in his vocabulary. Anyway, the thing failed, but I learned something uh, very important. I didn't, I wasn't damaged in terms of finances, but I learned a lot from that. Um, I used, I needed to change my the way it works. So, you know, trust is hard, and trust of the, over the internet is harder. So, I got, I invented this model that I, I charge in the first clients like per segment of a model. If it's more complex, like the concept, I equalize concept and low poly because I build everything all at once. So I, I ask for a payment after, um, after a high poly. No, after it depends. After high poly, low poly. Anyway, modeling part. Then after UVs and then after texturing. And after we gain some mutual trust, then it can get passed to per asset or a monthly or whatever, depending on the project, depending on uh, what people needed. Um, there were some high and lows. This is uh, very guerrilla kind of warfare stuff. Uh, you never know who you're going to run into. But luckily, as the years go by, it kind of filters uh, better because you get to know more quality people. So I got really fed up with this wild uh, client hunts. So I wanted to actually create something that's solid and that has a, way, a much larger payoff leverage. And I was pretty willing to like work until I bleed for, to get that. Um, some things were cool, some weren't, but mainly it was a miss. <laughs> and I was also pretty much prepared that for profit share kind of stuff, you will have to invest at least year two or three but without really working on uh, anything else, which will cost you opportunity and whatever not. But uh, it had to be done because uh, I kind of, I wanted it. So, uh, since I really got into it, uh, my body punished me. I got uh, CSR on my right eye. It happened four years ago, but this one's uh, after I was nervous and worked off too much. Uh, CSR is a, is a st uh, state of the eye where your retina glues away from the back uh, wall of the eyeball. Uh, and you basically have a perpetual oil stain on the center of your vision. So you cannot see any detail. You see light and you see peripherals, but you're pretty much blind for everything uh, more exact, like reading numbers, reading anything. And it, the state lasts, lasts for about four or five months. So I was thinking, what the hell am I doing here? Why do I do this to myself? Uh, so I started really, really thinking to start working more smart and uh, less like just work because this model uh, didn't, didn't, wasn't really valid. Uh, it was a very, very much the action changer. So I looked wider and the idea of passive income showed up. So by then the wheel only had turbo squid. Uh, I, I started posting there, but then CG Trader appeared and it kind of started an avalanche. Uh, this was my view of a safety net, uh, along with other stuff. And I, I just had to try it because it felt good. It also gave me an opportunity to be my own boss and be creative beyond the bounds of a project, which is very satisfying. Um, uh, this initially uh, was really slow and I uh, I was expecting it to be faster but um, I understood that my marketing was non-existent and Turbo Squid <coughs> is not really <coughs> artist friendly <coughs> so, um, but the thing got better later <coughs> And then I understood that it must be really passive, but uh, there is also price to that. Uh, you have to like build your momentum over time. And you have to keep adding stuff, and it just has to be top notch. 
<clears throat> but <clears throat> sooner or later, I got really awesome feedback because uh, not also because uh, seemingly people liked them. Uh, also, these new sites like CG Trader, they were really uh, artist friendly and active in promotion uh, uh, because they are probably made by artists so they understand completely the effort that goes into it and they understand the value and the power of your uh, of your name and of your image meaning you feel like a person there and if other artists see that they treat people like humans that's uh, very well for the site which was uh, proven correctly um, this so my only desire at that point was to just build stuff for sale build my models and gradually build that thing up till the point i live from it but there was a, a side effect um, the thing is that they were good and they also served not intentionally as my portfolio and many times people bought bought the stuff and they saw it works and they saw it, it's good. So they were hiring me for their own project, which was awesome because it was uh, financially, it was quicker and more lucrative. And I needed also this part uh, while I'm doing the runway with the, with the uh, public uh, stores. Um, yeah, also, as I was like sharing that stuff like crazy, I, I never spent internet so much in my life before I had to do this to survive. Uh, this led to inevitable like, inviting to for uh, public speaking here and there uh, or, or teaching people or whatnot, which was a great surprise to me because up until now I was like a lonely duck somewhere because no one in my immediate surroundings, not even remotely cares about what about this or what I do. I can even explain what I do. Uh, it's so far out. Like my uncle thinks I make comic books. I just can't explain uh, everything. You know. Um, now it's a lot different. Now gaming is a thing, and you can talk to a random guy on, on the street about it. Uh, but then. And not so much. It kind of boomed here, maybe two or three years ago, suddenly. So what I learned on all these travels, um, you don't have any other people to, to like ask. Now you do, but then not, not so much. Even though as a solo author, you must be the creator and you have yourself to kind of art direct, which is actually great. <clears throat> I also missed the rule of cool phenomena. Uh, I wrote phenomena uh, like intentionally because it is it's it has proven to me to be a true. Uh, this is counter to portfolio sending. What I mean by this, um, when you do something, you have each one of us has some feeling of what's good or what's quality so um, uh, if I invest enough time into something to the point that I find it awesome I'm pretty sure that someone else will find it awesome as well uh, my reasoning about that I mean that's happened then I went into reasoning it the thing is there's so much people uh, on the planet and so many different tastes that is very um, huge chance that there's a whole group of people that will like the same uh, stuff as you do and this i started to literally apply this on my design and it has proven to be true a lot so maybe you don't have to ask that many questions like is this good or not um, just be self-honest you know, when you see like the new Diablo trailer, you know that's epic. <laughs> so if you can't do that, you also know that you're not as epic. <laughs>
it's, it's very obvious. But I think when when people ask about feedback, I think deep inside they sort of know they're off. Mm-hmm. And they, they ask like feedback to improve themselves, but but some of them uh, are more like lazy uh, asking. Like I know it's not good enough, but maybe it will pass because I don't want to do it anymore. Just let release it. Um, also, this uh, just allow the work to speak for itself. And this quote I found somewhere. I don't know who said it. Be so good, they can't ignore you. Uh, that is really powerful, yeah, and it's very true. Mm. The thing is, when you do your work, it's yours and only yours. But when you release it outside, it's no longer just yours. You're just uh, an authoring mention of it. Uh, because your work, if it's good, becomes a part of something greater always. And I'm always glad, like when people uh, email me like a year after, like, look what I've done with your model. It looks awesome. And I'm really glad like when, uh, when I contribute in such a way. And also, sometimes uh, it's not only in games. Um, you have no idea where your model will be used. Like one guy made a VR bedroom just for himself. <laughs> It was awesome. He used my uh, biomech whale. And when I do a model, I have no idea about its future uh, use. What I care about uh, is that it's it looks good and that performs good. And it's in my interest that it works on the widest possible number of devices, which benefits, benefits me strongly. So. As I look at that, I it, it really affects the way I build it. So my main models were um, highly low poly, uh, as long as they keep a decent silhouette. And I tend to uh, put most of my detail in textures, so you can put that anywhere, and it still looks great. Um, this. Uh, this way of optimize, optimizing was also driven by the fact that when I started the, the store stuff, I was really in a hurry. Uh, and uh, this, these kind of solutions really, really uh, felt uh, like quality stuff. Um, and they have helped me. It also helped me in the client work because then I knew what I can do, what steps to skip while making the final project uh, product awesome. And also I could include some modularity where we could share uh, UVs or even finished pieces and still keep multiple assets, uh, original and in the same style. So I managed sometimes to, to shorten the work like three or four times. And, and, and rare cases, which was awesome. Of course, it all depends on what you do. When I when I did uh, sculpts for a three D print, then not much shortcuts you can do there. You know. Right tool for the right job. Uh, which brought me to understanding how important personal projects are. I've written this because no way I could remember it, but it's true. Um, <clears throat> there is this like also phenomenon. When I do inspire design just for myself and not for a project, this is where I don't have any limitations or frames I need to confine to. Sadly, a game does. You know, you can do sometimes a truly epic stuff, but it doesn't fit the theme of the game or, or technically it doesn't work for that specific, like cinematic or whatnot. And it kind of kills a great portion of what you have visited. I'm sure a lot of concept artists and artists in general face this problem. Uh, but uh, weirdly, when I do a personal project without boundaries, it gets just popular enough to get me jobs where I can still invent maximum and then just strip off the maximum uh, and the project has what they need. So this kind of led me to help other people because 
uh, I noticed that many artists um, mainly focus on the, on the technical aspect of how to model anything. They don't look at things holistically and how things fit into a larger whole. Um, and this is uh, where I kind of like to, to jump in and explain stuff, which reflects on the project, I think, uh, in a positive way. And of course, there are gray zones, and this is something I thought had never happened to me ever. But <laughs> one day, my friend threw me a screenshot and saw my models pirated on torrents. <laughs> this was insane. I wasn't, I wasn't angry at all. I was a little scared. Mm. But I never thought uh, to find myself on the other side of the fence. You know? um, um, what this meant for me wasn't that people are stealing uh, from something I, I live from. Uh, it meant that I, it was like a confirmation that, uh, that I'm making stuff that are worth stealing, <laughs> which really made me weirdly, sadistically happy. <laughs> And it also made me think when I remember when I ordered that zebras back in the day without internet or anything. Um, uh, it, I remember how now I'm I'm proud and grateful that I I can buy my own software. There's a certain uh, beauty in it, you know, when you like go from the mud and and you just grow enough. So, so you can like support yourself and do overflow and help others. It's this beautiful thing. Um, also, I was thinking like some of my models like cost twenty dollars. So if someone doesn't have twenty dollars and has to pirate it, uh, it's probably someone who has far bigger problems in their life. And uh, I always hope it it's like put to a, a good cause. You know, maybe it will serve them for a. It's like a huge demo pitch. Maybe maybe it will take them away from some third world country. You know, maybe this person will become like my boss someday. I don't know. Um, but I never I never was too sad about this. Um, still, if you can buy my models, if you like them, if you will benefit from them, also please do. Uh, send me a link to, so I can see what I did. I always help promote or, uh, what people do. Uh, so many times, like people make tutorials using these. And I, it really, it really is a great feeling when you contribute. And the magic of it is completely indirectional. You just throw them out there and let people uh, find their own use for them which is, I like, really love the openness of it. Uh, with this, I have my own creative freedom and the ben benefit happens on its own. There are no strict chains of command or, uh, or any other kind of restrictions as far as I know. So, action through perspective. Um, it's important to keep the healthy man mentality in creative approach. Uh, mind over matter. Uh, what I mean by this is technology changes, situations in life change. But it's it's always important to keep the creative drive active and like on a positive direction. You cannot strictly plan anything with high accuracy because times are really now really changeable now, and a lot of times you have to steer a lot. But what's important is that your goal is the same. So you just wiggle and like don't give up, don't get swayed. Sometimes that means not accepting an awesome job, which will give you greater security, but it will take you away from, from, from a dream you may have. Um, stuff like this, it's tricky. It, it can sway you both positively and negatively. Sometimes uh, you just can't find a client. Uh, you feel like you'll die. But, uh, these are things you just have to bring through. Um, it's also important to understand uh, how to learn and when to learn and what to learn. Tailor the pipeline. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Pipeline... <laughs> 
is uh, like a procedure to get something done. And it's not fixed as it seems in general. Um, it's really dependent on what you do and what you want for the final uh, uh, for the final result. So how to learn? What I mean by this is uh, uh, I never learn everything. I learn bare bones of what I need and I, I just allow organically uh, the other needed knowledge, knowledge to lean onto that. Um, what I really cherish is the right information in the right time, far more than general knowledge. Um, also, when I learn a new thing, which is often dependable on a project, when you go into a project, it will, um, it, it will tell you what you need to know. Uh, I don't think there's merit in learning absolutely everything. Uh, I think there is merit into trying everything, though. Um, uh, what I was trying to say and went off tangent. Yeah, uh, when I learn new thing, which I also highly recommend, like for example, I don't know, like in ZBrush, you you learn Dynamish, then do wildest thing with Dynamish. You can't, you know. I, I do an entire project with the new thing I learned, so that I make sure that it sits into muscle memory because your body. Um, is far better at remembering than your mind. You know, a lot of times you just know where the button is. You just sit and you start typing, and your fingers know where the buttons are. It's not like you think each time where the button is, and that's because you you so um, programmed your conscious mind to such point that it knows. Uh, I think the same uh, principle is should be applied to whatever you do, basically. Um, one other thing that uh, grew with all these stories along is self-marketing. Um, it's also important. It doesn't matter what you know. If you sell, if you sell stuff, or if you get yourself employed, uh, I'm not mean. I don't mean like marketing, like Coca-Cola or some kind of product. What I mean here by marketing is getting yourself known. Um, not like a brand, sort of like a household name, but it's more about exposing who you are and how you think and what you do. Um, this is important because if it regards a lot about the trust over internet thing that I mentioned before, um, people like to work with, with things they know. No one likes uh, uh, risks. Um, so if you know what you're dealing with, then you're okay. Then, like, even if some things are missing, those things can be negotiated or learned or whatever. Um, what is important here that you know what you want to do. This is the most important because uh, you want to be called for what you do and not what you do not do. For example, I don't do characters, and I doubt no one, anyone will call me for that, even though I can if I had sold character. Um, but I, on purpose, I, I launch only stuff that I truly enjoy. So uh, the thing is, even since then, where I didn't have any clue about what I'm going to do, uh, I was thinking, if I if I cannot succeed in thing in the thing I love the most, then how the hell am I going to succeed in stuff I hate? You know? So it's it's kind of a do or die thing that guts entangled into whole process that is now. Um, basically, just share your work. Don't be afraid. I'm also saying this because I know many artists that are kind of very anti on this. Uh, they have this standpoint, like they're selling their soul if you do art for someone else, or or even they are afraid that people will mock them. So they just say, "I just doing this for myself." And I'm like, you're sitting on a pot of gold. Maybe you, you need to go out. It's kind of an introverted thing. And I'm just keep uh, encouraging them all the time. <laughs> uh, so this is coming to an end. If This is my contact email, if anyone cares. <laughs> and these are platforms I'm on. Um, Instagram, Facebook, DeviantArt, ArtStation, YouTube. And others I'm also on. Sketchfab, uh, Shapeways, Redbubble. 
and others. Um, I've been working on this game for about a year and a half and, and, and continuing. It's an oncoming mobile game soon to go out, so keep an eye for it. It's not out yet. We're still receiving the test, internal testing people. Uh, some saying if I should do one, I will always say shoot for the moon and keep adjusting the gun. <laughs> Uh, because times are changing, but that doesn't mean it, you should do need to stop, you know. Until Har 4 stops you or whatever. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope uh, I wasn't boring. Um, so if anyone has any question, I'm sure I skipped a lot of stuff. This was uh, well, quite engaging to, to set up. Uh, anyway, I'm open to any kind of questions anyone can have. And I hope someone will benefit from this. Oh yeah, man! Eventually. Like, uh, there's a reason why I keep liking talking to you because, uh, in, in one aspect, you <laughs> make me feel really lazy, but in another aspect, uh, you're very inspirational, um, and you kind of play against the temple of um, an artist's journey of being quite a lonely one. Uh, you yours is quite yeah. situational being over there in eastern europe there's not a lot of uh yeah, yeah. game development circles where <laughs> yeah no there is but when it grew it was complete loneliness full of walls yeah it was like stupid reality but it was you know i just had to wait i had to literally wait for the time to for internet to exist in my country and for Elon Musk to invent PayPal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those, um, it's always difficult. I, I think, um, yeah. the motivation is off definitely a part of just getting in and out of the project. But, uh, I think it gives it gives artists over there that don't have the resources available to really push themselves uh, past the average growth, and it's uh, it's amazing yeah. that you were able to kind of stick to your guns and and decided to be where you want to be, but not be um, not be pressured into doing stuff that you don't want to do, which is. Uh, which is very tough to balance yeah. and like how have you been able to it's really tough to do that like, I, had, I had support of course from my parents somewhat so it, it was it was a, a runway that keeps me going i guess mm -hmm. until it flew well mm -hmm. what are the changing landscape uh that you are expecting you saying that years ago there wasn't any support group now there now there is uh game development circles within your area do you well, how do you anticipate the growth over there uh where you live in well, I, I expect i expect it expanding for sure i'm i'm not i cannot like say uh, how exactly it's gonna go but I I think it's gonna go well there is this oversaturation issue but there are also franchises and I still kind of believe that people can be original enough um, and there's enough knowledge in terms of marketing and um, dealing with people public relations are getting stronger uh, it's gonna be tough but I, I do expect growth in some way it's more mentioning... and more easier to get into it so. right you were mentioning deviant art and um i think around our age we were, we were I think I was dependent on Polycount, those kind of internet communities mm -hmm. the funny thing about the internet it's one way to kind of stick together but it's another way to kind of keep us apart um those communities, yeah. I feel like those times have, um, at least in my mind, felt uh, felt like it's been disappearing. I know we have art station. I know we have other ways to show off our work, but that bond where it's yeah. like a small group of really frequent people that you see all the time posting and growing and then meeting them in real person or like seeing that they're applying yeah. to the same job. It's like, hey, I saw that artwork. 
I, yeah. like I don't I don't see that as much uh, anymore. I, I don't know if your feeling is the same. Yes, uh, it's far less intimate and it's far more crowded. Yes. It's more like a statistic rather than like a personal relationship. So I, oftentimes I don't know the face behind, behind the artwork. So if I met someone on the street, like I probably couldn't rec- uh, recognize them. Unless they have decided to, to somewhere publicly display themselves or on Facebook or whatever. But a lot of artists are introverted and they don't like it. They have like a cat on, on the profile page. So, uh. <laughs> well, you went through like a, quite a journey and you don't come off as a shy person as at all. Did you have any um, any challenges there when you were working with other people or a bigger team that you felt uh, like an outsider? Uh, actually, not at all. Uh, thing is, I am I am introverted in a group that I don't feel has any commonality with, with what I feel, what, I, what, I, what I'm interested in. But with game devs, I'm at home. I never had that problem. Because I kind of feel that everybody uh, came from the same soup, you know. I feel like more together with, with you guys than with regular people. <laughs> it's just the way it is. <laughs> What have you been seeing the latest trends? Uh, this is something actually, uh, um, it was part of our roundtable yesterday, but I kind of like to see like a global perspective on um, the streaming wars, right? Streaming becoming a thing, you know, uh, uh, it, the internet seems like a very important aspect of you being connected with the game development community. Uh, how uh, is <laughs> I don't know how Eastern Europe is over there with technology, but is <laughs> is streaming, uh, gaming, uh, nearby? Is that something? That's just like, can we just get a console over here and <laughs> connect through that way first? Well, Where are we on that? In terms of technology, uh, there are, we have streamers, but uh, I'm not really equated with them. There are more. I think they're more loved by the teenage population. <laughs> also, because I work, I really don't have time to even look at them. I have no idea. But they, they do exist and there is a, there is a culture of streaming here, definitely. We, I think they, they most uh, act more like a Balkan entirely, like Serbia, Hrvatska and uh, Bosnia Herzegovina. They like, they function on uh, like together on all of these countries. They all have, have like uh, meetups, groups. Uh, sort of like, a, it's like an influencer thing mm-hmm. in here, yeah. And yes, it's gonna grow. I think uh, more and more children are, are exposed and much more conscious in terms of information in general. So they find like someone who can relate to in these people. So yes, definitely, yeah. So, like the last year or so, um, games like Fortnite or, or other aspects where people who are not familiar with game development or games in general have just been globally interested with it. Um, has that been an effect over there that people are finally understanding what you do? <laughs> has it been helpful? <laughs> and do you see it growing oh. in that way? <laughs> it really depends. It really depends. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> maybe you're still, you're still a comic maybe book artist. My friends and friends of my friends. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think the street people do. Yeah. <laughs> so people funny. still think that games are made because you push a button and like it's computer generated and that's it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think there's a, a massive insight into what has to go in it. <laughs> yeah, just being yeah. in the United States the last five years, like um, it used to be me kind of explaining myself as like, yes, I'm uh, I'm a 3D artist in the game industry. That used to be my one line, and then uh, slowly it became like, yeah. oh, what what game did you work on? I was like, oh, you actually know about yeah. games. That's right. That I could tell them, and then now it's more like. Uh, 
it's less about the initial reaction of like, oh, you 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 game test, right? That's the first thing that when I say I work with yeah. the game industry, it's like, oh, you're a game tester. It's like, no, I'm not. You know? <laughs> but now, but now it's actually, uh, it's like, oh, you actually make the games. It's like I don't have to explain myself as much. So at least in the United States, yeah. it's it's slowly the conversation is kind of turning into that. So it's becoming a little easier yeah. to kind of get across to people. So I imagine in Eastern Europe will yeah. take like. 10 years, <laughs> 10 years from now <laughs> to get to that point, right? Hopefully all the, young, all the youngers will know immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm seeing a shift. The ones that matter the most, I know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there, was, there is a shift. I must admit, uh, there is a huge shift. But very recently, like, it's, it's subtle. It's very subtle, like two, three years ago, and then boom. Yes. Yeah. So that's super exciting. Well, Igor, uh, I want to thank you so much for uh, being a part of this. And I also want to, uh, maybe if you can shift thank to you. your last slide again to how people can find you uh, so wow. that we can show them one last time uh, before I see you mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as you are starting that up, I just want to remind people that we have one more speaker that's coming up. And if you have questions at the end of each presentation, you're welcome to kind of go in the Twitch chat, Facebook chat, Twitch chat, wherever you're watching us to ask those questions so that we can get it to our speaker. So I'm going to switch over to Igor and Igor, uh, I'm going to hand the mic over to you. You Thank do you your so last much. spiel. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for the invite. I hope someone will benefit. Keep an eye for Thanks of the Galaxy video game. And have a great day and have a great game dev life. <laughs> I love it.